Okay, I everyone. told you, Matt. Grandpa told you to keep time shifting whenever you want. Listen, I'm gonna go back in time and kick someone else in the nuts. Oh. I'm just gonna go back in time and kick every pest dictator in the nuts and they won't even know what happened. Because I'm immediately gonna port. Anyway, we're, we're watching a time shift review. This is a game I actually played when I was younger. And I remember having fun with it, but I never finished it because there was this one part where I have to avoid this giant robot. And I just kept trying to stop time and... I kind of cheated by having a bike go through there, but still wasn't enough. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Neural stimulant. Yeah, you can go back in time shortly. Just hitting him with the car. <laughs> I always remember Time Shift as being one of the first 7th gen FPS games, but it was about two years in until it came out. What's interesting oh. is that it could have been. It had several demos available through 2005 and early 2006. Interesting. Honestly, I don't remember where I play it, but I just... It's one of those many games that you rent one week, play through, and then return. It didn't really have that last... Oh. That, the long-lasting impression, but it was still pretty good. It had the same concepts, and some sections are still near identical. But the demo's reception was mainly bad, and Atari was already bleeding money at that point. So, oh. they sold it off to Vivid. Oh, this was from Atari? God damn! I forgot Atari lived through during this period <laughs> of video games. Bendy, who already had an FPS hit on their hands after publishing Fear. Oh, they gave it to the Fear people. However, before they launched the game, they gave the developers another year to overhaul it. And what came next was a huge graphical upgrade and art shift, along with a massive rewrite of the story. The story in particular is pretty nuts, because if you've played Time Shift, you know it has a silent protagonist. Yeah. I knew this wasn't always the case, but didn't know just how far that went. I'll just take his lens after I put a bullet in his head. They play Colonel Swift in the game Time Shift. I, do I know that actor? What the hell? Because, yeah, the time shifter protag is completely voiceless. He is ex-military. He's silent. Very smart. It's worth mentioning this was originally going to be a previous gen game. And the amount of old builds oh. and cut content floating oh. around online and in the game itself is definitely interesting. So the term development... You could probably make a whole nother game out of all that. Guys, the game still has some issues now. For example, oh. the Steam version currently doesn't have the latest patch. The oh. GOG version does, and this was an official patch, not some obscure fan thing, so I'm not sure what happened there. But that it means weird. the native Steam version has some more graphical issues and some bugs, which can include the enemy armor system not functioning correctly, making the game way easier. Of course, this all assumes you were actually shooting, able to launch stopping it. time and, and shooting him in the face for both versions. Luckily, there's a fixed EXE made by a GOG forum user that takes care of that. So that should all get you going, and I'll link it down below. If you want to be extra fancy, the game does support EAX sound, though the game menu itself won't reflect that it's actually on. This gives the game those cool environmental reverb effects, though it might not always make sense, like why your earpiece is doing that. So we've been digging through all this intel that you hacked. Listen to this. I've always oh. known Crone has been running a huge munitions operation for years, but I do remember some of the fun guns in this game, is. like a crossbow. If you can get inside and take oh. care of business, this could be the tipping point to getting us to Crone. But let's be real, you're getting this for the weapon effects. Yeah. And that about covers the essentials, so let's get started. A mini flamethrower that shoots flamethrower, flaming balls. And it was on top of a huge underground facility. This might be the cause of our citywide power outage. Disaster has struck the mysterious research lab. Liver King Dr. Kleiner, also known as Dr. Crone, has stolen the Alpha Suit, a highly oh. advanced quantum device and attacks Black Hole. It allows only a single user to travel across time. But thanks to generous public funding, there's also the Beta Suit. This one is more militarized, has local time control technology, and comes equipped with Sam, who is an AI who could do everything from warn from dangers to automatically jump out to avoid a paradox. Cool. I do like the look of this suit, I will be honest. So even though Chrome left before you and sabotaged the facility, you play as Time Man who chases him in the beta suit. Oh God. And yeah, I know that alone. Oh, hey, Maury. Welcome back. I'll discover what my brain can do. <laughs> oh my God. What your brain can do? Uh, yeah, probably 
if you gave me too much information about some stuff, my brain, my brain would automatically shut down and I'll get really sleepy. <laughs> well then. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious almighty. Basically, I fell asleep, but you told me all the information and I was like, oh shit. Oh no, I'm getting really sleepy. I don't know what's happening. And I fell asleep on my chair. I died. You died. All right. Well, all right then. <laughs> I'm glad you're back. Uh, what was the thing that was causing you to <laughs> shut down? Ah, uh, you guys were talking about some. What are you calling that thing again? The super villain. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, uh, you're getting real sleepy over there. <laughs> oh, you were oh getting real thinky, and then you got real sleepy. <laughs> to type out plot holes because those are yeah. for time travel <laughs> stories. Go. But they later confirm there are multiple timelines and the alpha suit jumped across that. Or oh. something. Well, wherever you are, it is a very different 1939. Crone Nin has gone back and- 1939? Used his knowledge of future events and science to become the ruler of the world. At least I assume the world. A lot oh. of what happened or what is happening is kept extremely vague and we'll talk more about why that is soon. But for now, you must help the resistance defeat Crone. Because Makes sense. surely all the details will fall into place later. So let's talk about that visual overhaul. Stalker. The good news is that the game does look next gen on a technical level. For back then anyways, but as someone who's more used to FPS games from then just being a port on PC, this one holds up surprisingly more than I thought it would, especially when it comes to shaders and it's lighting definitely is good a PS3 too. This is one of those things that YouTube compression absolutely massacres, but the rain in particular is a standout. Crone's Alpha District has a Matrix 3 amount of rain to the point that it feels like you might be able to drown. That's already good for setting that kind of apocalyptic tone, but for a game with time control powers, it's perfect. Since you can temporarily oh. slow, halt, or reverse time, having rain is the perfect encompassing visual. You True. see that you're controlling the flow of all time and not just stuck in a little bubble. It's not always raining, since sometimes the weather does clear up, or you might go to a different environment out in the country, like the woods or a snowy mountain pass. Though sadly, no snow actually falls there. It ends up being a grey and muted game overall, which a lot of shooters from 7th gen were like that, but this no, is one where true. it does feel appropriate, even if they were clearly drawing from other games for this approach. Especially when you see what the game looked like before, where it's more colourful, cartoony, and the technology looks more clockwork and steampunk inspired. You still get some echoes of the old art style, like there are some propaganda posters that are completely untouched. Because Aww. I did look, and I don't think the Crone Samurai are around anymore, <laughs> because before it seems they wanted to give you a completely alien timeline, and now it's trickier. Because you could say that yeah, this was, was a retro. I mean, it was originally supposed to be a PS2 game, so. Future. There are big blocky computers. You'll notice Jetson styled Roombas around and just other things. This kind of looks like Fallout. Does anyone else get that feeling with, like, these soda machines? Uh huh. Like Fallout style. Well, then again, they're in, like, 1930s. Like, idea of the future. Then you encounter so. mechs, which seem like they wouldn't be too far out of place in Battletech. Enemy oh. soldiers can be decked out in thick armor, and a lot of them wouldn't look out of place inside of fear. Then some vehicles in tech look a little more diesel punk. Big, inefficient, brutal machines that do get the job done. Then, running through all God of that, damn. there's a Leonardo da Vinci theme. The what the hell? Oh yeah, the fucking are filled with airships, air and planes ships. have that kind of wing shape you would draw. When you unlock concept art, a good amount uses the Vitruvian Man. So oh. you encounter weird combinations of these things, like what looks like a modern jet engine packed into something Da Vinci would draw. But then there are holdovers and remixes from the old version of the game, like your pistol having a digital counter on it. And your main carbine is just the most gun to ever gun. The this most could easily gun to be ever from Killzone or Haze. Haze. Of games of this era were affected by no one remembers Haze. Well, I do because I played through the whole game. It is. It was apparently called a Halo killer at one point, but I don't know what happened along there. <laughs> Ugh, Haze was so bad. By what I like to call Halo Drift. Because when Bungie made the guns for Halo, well, they were scaled for Everyone's Master disappeared. Chief, other Spartans. Huge post-human cyborg freaks. Oh no, Discord's doing a thing. Oh, Discord, why? Discord's screwing up on my end. Uh, I don't know what to do. Okay, we're back. Hello? Oh no. Hi, Mac. More, are you there? Discord did a thing, I don't know why, and it's still... It's not showing you guys up for some reason. Oh no. I think Mori's died again. When you put those same guns on Marines, oh, they're cartoonish. Don't worry. Okay. Also, if you want to send... Uh, you, your friend can either join my Discord or send me a DM or something if she wants to talk about the 
comic stuff. Also, I don't know why, but it's still... There we go! We're fixed! Especially big, and now... Because when Bungie I, made the I, guns for I just show my sister the medicine, and then she said, Oh, look at this! Left toe! Like, what the fuck do you mean, left toe? <laughs> I look at it, and it's like, left toe, my medicine! <laughs> well, alright then. I don't know why, but the symbols aren't moving now for Fuji, but I'll try and fix that later. Halo, they were scaled for Master Chief and other Spartans. Huge post-human cyborg wow. freaks. When you put those symbols on the left though, there's an S in the middle. Really big, and now Halo has had to stick with it. But even there, they've only tried to tone it down without breaking the style oh, too much. The face. Anyways, if you wondered why guns can be so big on My characters yes. in this era, My yes. Get out of the <laughs> Okay, give me one second. I'll be right back. Okay, that should fix it. There we go. It's fixed. I thought it disappeared. But yes, I don't know what Boy is talking about, but yes. This is mainly why. But beyond that, a lot of character designs wouldn't look out of place in Gears of War, which came out almost exactly a year before. Wow. Like, sure, it's an alternate 1939, but everyone looks and talks like it's the mid-2000s. Sounds about Hurry, bro. right. Hurry! Oh my god. Don't yet, time, man. We gotta get to the train. This isn't me saying, ooh, you're mixing up art styles. It's that more that some ideas and art direction they have is the neat, gear. but it clashes oh, a lot yes. with other elements in it, which you could still argue if it's the whole... What was that, Mori? Nothing. I was talking to my sister. <laughs> oh, okay. Old time is all messed up. Angle. No, she's just the issue is all right of this now. is filtered through. Uh, here's yeah. what's popular now, which makes it more generic than it could have been. Yeah, uh, when a uh, game trying to be unique absorbs just trends, they obviously they usually make it more bland. Like what we saw with Concord, it has some of the most bland stuff I have seen in a long time. Dear God, those designs are bad. Anyway, in the story, you're arriving in what we don't I talk about Concord capital. here. There are lots of buildings. Well, we do because oh. we make fun of it because the devs seem to be not very nice people. But either way, buildings and giant statues uh -huh. of the man. But when you get there, it's already a bombed out war zone with an active rebel force in it. There are rotting interiors covered in graffiti, contrasted by highly advanced technology inside of them, which makes sense when it's in Half Life 2. The oh. Combine only care about resource efficiency and don't give a single shit about aesthetics. So enhancing a decrepit area as little as possible made sense for them. And there were other games. Oh, so there's a bunch of Half-Life insp inspiration here then. But yeah, Concord's devs are apparently called everyone untalented. Well, Usually, at least yeah. one of them called them untalented freaks. So the story they were telling. This yeah, makes no great. sense for an egomaniac who clearly cares deeply about his image. There are some locations that lean into this more, but precious few compared to what you've seen a million times before. It's a choice that waters everything down into mush. I mean, I'm gonna guess the game being set in 1939 wasn't an accident, unless they're all Oz heads, but you don't have the under-equipped rebels now fighting a mysterious faction armed with future weaponry. Yeah. Sure, they're losing the fight, but such a massive battle happening in a bombed out capital isn't a great sign of strength for the regime. No, it's because not. Because the story is so thin, you mainly only have these visual cues to go off of. There's no slow unfolding of the world where you're dropped into the Crone regime and you're the spark that ignites the rebellion. There's no build up to the uprising, no magic hero from the future that turns the tide. Instead, oh, wow. you don't feel that significant and the world you're That's in doesn't... A, for those who don't know, that is a scene from uh, Justice League where for some reason Vandal Savage goes back in time and basically helps the Germans win World War II by giving them somehow giant roller tank things. Also, Matt, you need to share your screen. Oh, I need to do it again? Yeah. God damn it. Yeah. Sorry. We were wondering what you were talking about. Apparently sorry, we were talking sorry, about. sorry. You're fine. Feel real either. For all yeah. of the good ideas that it does have in its art direction, it ends up feeling like a fake game that would play on CSI. And if you've ever yeah. played any Half-Life game, it starts coming across as a fever dream. Like, oh. it took me a while to realize I was fighting the police over the military for the first few chapters. Oh. Let's see your papers. I guess I should have known with a brain cat, Crone Cast. Crone Cast. Goodbye, Dennis Quaid. Welcome, silent protagonist. Dennis Quaid. So, how about the sound? I forgot that we were talking about Dennis Quaid earlier. 
God damn. It's fairly average all around. There are some good punchy sound effects, but also a lot of unmodified stock ones as well. Like, oh yeah, that sound. We've heard a thousand times in At shooters. At first, your gun's not slowing down for bullet time seems disappointing, but there's more to it. Because you have games like Fear where everything slows down, including the sound effects. Time shift will do that for your enemies, but not for your own. God damn, he's taking everyone out. It's still a very cool thing to do. Just slow down time and hit them before they could do a thing. Which probably makes it look like you're going super fast. This is still fun in its own right, especially since slowing down time speeds you up slightly. So if anything, your version of bullet time is the priority lane. God damn. I've got no complaints there. As for the music, Time Shift definitely has some. It's action music, and sometimes you notice it. <laughs> sometimes it's you notice but it. I get nothing from it. Yeah, it's alright. It's normal, like, soft rock. What? I don't know. The mixing on some tracks seems a little harsh, but. Do you guys know what that movie was? That uh, was, no, not really. That was Cats vs. Dogs 1. Oh my lord. Have you ever seen that movie? I think I've heard about it. It's basically like there's a secret organization of cats and there's a secret organization of dogs. And they're constantly fighting. With the dogs being the good guys. Oh my lord. It doesn't feel worth going into. It's all okay. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on to the game itself. There's a lot of joy to be found in time control games, especially ones where you can shoot someone in the face. Sometimes it doesn't matter if there's an amazing story or a nothing story. Good mechanics can bridge anyone. True. Yeah, they got this game, right, for people who smoke or people who what? drink. Like, if you drink beer and you get drunk, or if you smoke weed and you get high, and you just, anything, like, if you, if you just be what? fucked up. <laughs> the funny part about it, you can do this right like this. You. <laughs> On a base level, that was from IGN. That's weird. That was Shift very weird. What the hell? You have the two weapon limit, the regenerating health, the helicopter boss. Yeah, it's all the usual outside shooter of time stuff. Powers, there's still good stuff worthy of attention. This comes with a big asterisk, but the firefights with enemies can be pretty good for the time. They have solid audio callouts and a nice mix of dynamic reactions to what you're doing, along with some scripted events along the way to make them seem smarter. The actual gunplay doesn't feel amazing, but it is nice having well-animated enemies to fight. They're not to the level where you'd want to do a no-time power run like Max Payne or Fear, because no matter what difficulty you play it on, if you find it challenging, that's going to be very front-loaded. When you first oh. get playing, your weapon roster is limited, along with your use of time powers. Even with your suit's armor, most of the enemies are better protected, and you'll usually die quickly in a straight-up fight. This quickly that makes changes sense. when you get manual control of your powers. All of them require oh. suit energy to use, which recharges over time. Your time slow ability also drains your bar the slowest. It also increases your fire rate and your movement speed, along with making your health regenerate faster. So this alone is absurdly strong, but it's also the most familiar to abilities in other games. Stopping time doesn't speed you up any, but it's so powerful that it doesn't need to. It does drain faster than slowing, but it's a few moments to do whatever you want with no retaliation. Also, since time has stopped at the atomic level, you can also walk across water and walk through flames unharmed. That's Some enemies crazy. can have defenses that stopping time completely gets rid of. And there are extra fun touches too, like being able to grab a gun out of an enemy's hand. <laughs> oh yeah! Stuff like that is fun to play around with and see what you can do, but other than that, the power drain and lack of speed still make it less attractive than just slowing things down. That leaves you with reversing time, which is by far the most interesting power. The energy yeah. drain is similar to halting time, but where that is basically slow-mo's slower cousin, here you can be a lot more tactical with it in ways that feel This satisfying. can be very cool. Did someone chuck a grenade at you? Fuck you, it never happened. Did you wander into an area where people start shooting at you? Just reverse time to before when they heard you in the first place. You can't undo damage you've already taken because, again, the suit is in its own realm, but it still gives you a kind of superhero shooter feeling that a lot of other games still don't have. If you die, you solve the Having the game, ability to re reverse your that. I'm sure if this was made today, regular if time you died, is Sam would let you watch yourself be auto-returned to the checkpoint. For now, it sure is useful for being sneaky. 
being able to get the drop on people. Honestly, just having that power is kind of cool, and you don't really need the time plot, but uh, still, it would be a good idea for a story for something. I'm thinking too along the lines. I have enough backloaded stuff to make. Halting time, and then having a turnaround where you can actually reverse time if they get the drop on you is great. Plus the effect of seeing time on threes, and all the chaos you planted springs in an instant. There are flashes of greatness throughout the game, and you're guaranteed to have some cool moments. I wish it was Finally, a great game. Finally, you can roll your half-elf katana rogue again and the DM can't stop you. When it's at its best, time shift feels like a time shift. Halfling play. rogue katana. Ground, it's more just how often that actually happens. <laughs> Due to a combination of your time powers and probably reusing levels from a previous gen, there are a lot of narrow spaces you fight in. Especially early on, but even when things open up more, it barely takes advantage of these spaces. You can pass that through stinks. a large room filled with boxes and cover that feels like it should be a fighting arena and nothing happens in it. Or you go through a giant tank factory and then most of your time is spent fighting on a narrow walkway. When you get to the bottom, there are barely any enemies at all. They oh. introduce enemy time-shifting enemies, which are supposed to be an equal to you, and I'm not sure how they work, but you still mop the floor with them. Fairly early on, you get an explosive bow with a large magazine that one-shots oh. enemies. Whenever I had it, I still tried aiming for the head to make it a little more fun, but it's still a cakewalk machine. Plus, yeah, that's the strongest thing in the end. Key, you can also press game. another button to have Sam select a power for you. This is usually slow-mo in combat, but when it means a physics puzzle, it means there's no guesswork, and even without that, there's not much to guess. And wouldn't you believe it, I mean, the reverse puzzle. puzzles are also the best ones. Yeah. There aren't many weapons that right. take advantage of the time mechanic, and most are Half-Life derivatives again. The game is only about five or six hours long, but that is about the time when the gimmick starts getting old, so that works out. The premise for this game, and the time powers used properly, are fantastic. It's just the incredible lack of substance to it. When it comes to yeah, game remakes, sad. this is more the kind of thing I'd want to see. An amazing idea with flawed execution that could really shine. Because I did find lots of little things to appreciate, but as a package, it just mm. leaves your brain immediately. Like the story, which is so bare bones nothing. And ironically repetitive, yeah. like helping the rebels escape on a zeppelin and you leave on a plane, then you blow stuff up and then capture a new zeppelin and then leave on a plane, taking you back- I only got like halfway through to where they were already leaving on the first zeppelin and haven't gone through there. I didn't see Up about the, the second level one. with the same spider walker, but now you shoot the bad man and you win. The final boss gives you three feet of movement space. Oh, I wow. promise you're not missing a story. The most interesting thing in the story is figuring out whether or not gorillas already existed somehow. But this oh. game also had multiplayer, where you could throw a grenade that would affect time and a sphere around it. GameSpy might be dead, but I knew there was a site with instructions for it. I went to check that, and... Oh my god, what the hell? I don't know what I'm seeing. I have to throw the ending forward. I'll look through more Time Train games, and hopefully we'll find something better. Hopefully. Right, comrade? Oh, I think he's going to go to Singularity next, which is another time-altering game. Which, uh... Yeah, you can do a few things with time in there, but not that much. Anyway. On to the left. Oh my god. He snuck it in there at the end. Have I seen the Fallout show? Yeah, I did recently, actually, and I was not sold at all in the early previews, but when I did sit down and watch the show, the only thing I could think was that it was the polar opposite of the Halo show. It kept the uh -huh. tone intact, and yeah, there were some lore things I was iffy about, but the show was entertaining, so I wasn't that bothered by it. I'm not I sure guess. if we'll see it's canon going forward, but after Fallout 4, and especially Fallout 76, it's like, who cares? When it comes yeah, to- Yeah, people stop caring just a bit, but I need to play Fallout London, though. I really do. I mean, the to be honest, you... Fallout 76 started with a lot of bugs and stuff, so it's kind of hard to want to continue with the franchise that doesn't get as much love as it should, because uh, Bethesda kind of dropped the ball on a lot of their projects lately. They only seem to be getting worse. Which sucks. But what can you do? Yeah... Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm just I want to say it's... Oh, go ahead. I want to say it's because of poor management slash poor uh, higher-ups, but even then, I don't think that's fully the case anymore with this one. You never know nowadays. You can always ignore yeah. the next entries you don't like. Did I ever yeah. play the Time Splitters games? Yeah, they're incredible. And I'm not sure if it was one I or two, the first but one, I but... think one of the games had a full remaster inside of Homefront the Revolution for... I did... I tried playing the first one, it has a lot of problems, so I kind of stopped. I might go back and try them again. Well, we'll for some see. reason. I'm not sure of the details, but that might be the most interesting thing about that game. Do Pop-Tarts or Uncrustables count as ravioli? No. What? I've heard a similar thing about sandwich debates, where people try to say a hot dog is a sandwich, or... There's like these charts where people try to categorize it. And maybe people are technically correct on some labels, but why are we disrupting the natural order? <laughs> we don't need that there. Get me out, out of here. I love that he said that. You look like Mario. <laughs> and he's like, no, you're just saying, it's like you don't put pineapple on pizza. It's against the law. Anyway. Thank you so much for coming by. If you like what we're doing here, you know, do all those nice things, and we'll see you guys later.